wandering around this planet trying to feed God's people because when you call me father, I gotta put bread on the table. If you're calling a shepherd or pastor, then guess what we gotta do? Feed the flock. And I'll be very honest with you, the flock is finicky. It is amazing. <laughs> they are like so spoiled. There was a mother who came up to me and she's like, Hey Father Leo, my kids don't like going to church. They don't get anything out of it. And then she said, and they don't eat broccoli. <laughs> So I said, this is super serious, ma'am. First, tell me how you prepare your broccoli, right? So I asked her, and uh, she told me, and I said, okay, ma'am, with all due respect, I gotta be honest with you, that sounds disgusting. I, I, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat it the way she prepared it. And you know, that's part of the reason why they don't get anything out of church. In my, in my work, whenever I hear people say things like, oh, I don't get anything out of church. As a chef, I hear, then they're not being fed. We even use that language. If you're not being fed, where are you going to go? You're going to go someplace else. But here's the problem. If you're not being fed, it might be my fault because I'm not doing a good job of feeding you. Or it might be your fault because you don't come already hungry. Or you don't like what I'm serving you because you have an immature palate and you're stuck on gummy bears and chicken nuggets for the rest of your life. So I can understand why they don't like what I have to eat. But if they don't come hungry, it might be their fault because they are already full of themselves. Ouch, right? Which is the God's honest truth. One of the problems with the Catholic faith is that we either aren't doing a good job feeding people or people aren't hungering for it because they are just so used to an immature version of Christianity, which always has to be sweet. Let me tell you, if it's always sweet, it's going to cause cavities. Trust me on that. Which is why you got to give them sometimes the bitter herbs of truth. Because it's really good for digestion, okay? And so what I'm going to do for you all tonight, I'm just simply going to make for you penne a la vodka. Because this ain't no Baptist church up in here, all right? Ladies and gentlemen. And I know a lot of people get very nervous when I am cutting and chopping at the same time. But folks... I'm a professional, okay? And the second thing is, I know what I'm doing. I know where my knife is in relation to the onion. And the reason why I'm even doing the onion is because it's the aromatic that's gonna be used for this penne vodka sauce. And a lot of people don't like using onion because, I don't know, it just it's hard for them to cut it and all that stuff. And, but folks, look, I just did one onion. I No tears. <laughs> It's a sign of my holiness, all right? <laughs> or it's a sign of the fact that I know how to do it. And so cooking is technique and practice. That sounds a lot like faith. It's about technique and practice. And I think the reason why people aren't good with the faith is because they don't know the technique, because they're not willing to learn it, and they don't practice. Two tablespoons of olive oil, perfectly measured. All right, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sauteing this up. And if you notice, I wanted specifically to use this onion because this onion is a very theological vegetable because it makes you cry, right? And so it's a theological vegetable because it's a root vegetable. I want everyone at the end of this day to be like this onion, rooted. Do you see the root right there? I kind of kept the root in place so that when I ripped it apart like a ninja, nothing happened to it except for what I wanted it to do. One of the problems with us is that we are so uprooted. That's why we need to be radical in our Catholic faith. Why? Because the word radical is the root word for root. So radix is the Latin word for root. It's the same as radish, a root vegetable. So I ask you, what roots you together? And who is trying to pull you apart? We obviously know that if there's one thing that can pull us all together, it's food. And the one thing that pulls us apart is when we're being fed away from our own table, which is why I'm doing what I do with my nonprofit group, thetablefoundation.org. Father uh, Schnippel mentioned that I'm, I'm, I'm the host and creator of gracebeforemeals.com, but this year we're changing, we're rebranding, we're expanding. This is exciting. And so we're going to actually be calling it platinggrace.com because that's what I do. I'm plating grace and every time people hear grace before meals Dot com. They automatically think that I'm trying to get them to pray before they eat, which is a good thing. But I couldn't care less if you pray before you eat. I pray that when you receive 
great. This is going to make the most amazing sound ever, as you can tell already, because I can see the smoking point of the olive oil. It's going to, listen, I'm just going to test it. Okay, good. Ready? Ready for the sound? It, it's a, it really is my most favorite sound ever, second only to when the priest or deacon says, Mass is ended, go in peace. That's, that's my favorite sound. All right, so the onions are going to go, and then I'm going to break down the garlic. And a lot of people don't really like using garlic, fresh garlic, because frankly, it's kind of intimidating, and they don't know how to break it apart. So really commonsensically, folks, take the, uh, the garlic, flat end of the knife, boom. Sm don't do this, okay? <laughs> And again, everyone gets kind of crazy about it. It's like, ah, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing because all he's doing is common sense. And it's right. It is common sense. And one of the issues is, if we ask ourselves commonsensically, how do, how do you all get to heaven? How do you all get to heaven? The common sense answer is, be hungry for it. Because we all know what heaven ultimately is. It's a wedding feast, a banquet. And oftentimes, we like to just simply consider our faith almost not like a smorgasbord that it is, but we love to treat it like a cafeteria Catholic, and those people drive me bonkers. You know a cafeteria Catholic, right? They like pick and choose what they want to believe and digest. That's a problem, because when God gives, he gives everything. We're just supposed to be careful of not eating sin, because that happens. So what I've got right now are the onions and the garlic, and I don't know, can you all kind of smell this right now? Does it smell good? Yes. I want to use this as incense at church. Okay, because <laughs> if we do this, amen, people, brother. Amen. Amen. Because uh -huh. they will come, right? That's exactly it. So, you know, by the way, I'm just going to be cooking this up and telling you a little bit about what I do at platinggrace.com. And by the way, my website is going to be different as well. So you can find me at platinggrace.com, but you can also find me at fatherleofeeds.com. And why? Because that's kind of who I am, and that's kind of what I do. One of the issues is, my job is to make sure that people's minds are fed. Minds are fed. And the, that's more challenging than feeding the body. That hearts are fed. And I just realized that if I really wanted to touch people's hearts and minds, then the easiest way to do it is to go through the stomach, right? <laughs> And isn't that what Jesus did? Every one of his lessons. By the way, are you guys having fun? Just a little fun just yet? Okay, good. And you know why? Because you probably know you're going to eat, right? <laughs> Frankly, that's just all there is to it. So why, why am I doing all of this, especially with my books, available where books are sold? Basically, <laughs> why, why am I on radio? Why am I on TV? Every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, EWTN. Why am I doing all of this stuff? Well, I think it's because when people are thinking, when they think of their faith, they automatically think, boring. How many of you here think the church is boring? Raise your hand. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being, thank you, young man, for being honest. The rest of you people, I will see you in the confessional, okay? That is, you are lying through your teeth. And it can be boring, but let me tell you why. Let me give you the definition of boring. Boring is answering a question that no one is asking. That's why, parents, you're so boring sometimes. Teachers are boring sometimes. Priests, not these priests, but priests can be boring because all we're doing is talking about stuff that no one cares about. And one of the issues is that we're not allowed to talk about the things that everybody else is talking about simply because in today's language, if I were to disagree with someone in conversation, they'll call it hate speech and they'll sue me. Do you know what my response is to all that? shove food down their faces, all right? So listen, y'all, I've got flat leaf parsley, and all I'm going to do is just trim the, the leaves off of it. And a lot of people don't use the stems because they, it's kind of woodsy. It's kind of hard to eat, you know? I mean, it's like chewing on a piece of twig. And the fact is, this has a lot of flavor, so don't throw this away. It's a sin. <laughs> My mom says so. <laughs> She's like, don't throw that away. There are hungry people in the Philippines who would eat that poop.
food, right? And so I'm like, well, then I'll wrap it up and send it to them, Mom. What am I going to do about it, right? So but if you can't break this down, which I am going to do because I'm a professional, but if you can't break this down, don't throw it away. You see the peels and the leftover stem from the rest of the aromatics. Put it in a cheesecloth. Drop it into your broth. Let it basically give an herbaceous quality to your broth. Then you take the contents of that cheesecloth after it's cooked down a while, and then you basically have to put it in a blender, give it a whirl, dump that into your garden for instant, basically, organic nutrients. See, nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. You put it in God's hands, what's he gonna do? He's gonna turn into a feast with leftovers. I think he's Filipino. <laughs> Primarily because there's one gospel passage where literally the man eats fish for breakfast. <laughs> By the way, I'm adding a little bit of parsley now to this, and I'm gonna add the sauce qualities to it as well. Now what we've got to do is add a little bit of a, a very important ingredient called lo doppio concentrato di pomodoro, also known as tomato paste, okay? <laughs> and a lot of people don't like working with tomato paste because frankly it's a little coiningly thick and you gotta cook it out a long time, and you gotta add water to the can and zhuzh it around so nothing. So here's what I do. I take the top off, I take the bottom off, and it makes it real easy for me just to take it all out and it just comes right out super quickly with no waste. And everybody gets very excited about this technique. And I say, people, it's technique, all right? So it's simple to do. You just have to know some of the basics. But I think that even in our Catholic church, we don't know the basics. If I were to ask some of you to recite the act of contrition, they'd be like, oh, I don't know it. I don't have the cheat sheet, right? Or even better, I dare somebody, I double dare somebody, to say the new version of the Apostles' Creed. It's pretty hard to do, ain't it? But it's so much easier to do when you're like with a hundred other people. Right. And why? There are just some things that we're not supposed to do alone. Praying is one of them. Even if you're supposed to pray in solitude, we're always praying with it. That's why I can't stand it when people say, Ah, oh, why do I gotta go to church? You know, they, they say stuff like that all the time. And I say, okay, right, fine, then stay home for Mass. Let me ask you, what hymn did you sing? <laughs> How was your own homily? <laughs> Here's the better question. How much money did you put in the collection basket, all right? Thank you. Frankly, we got to work on community. And there's one thing that brings people together. Vodka! <laughs> so what I got to do now, at this stage, some of you are all thinking, oh my gosh, this man looks like he just burnt... This looks like Christmas gone bad right in here. What I've got to do now is I've got to deglaze the pan, which and what we're going to do to deglaze the pan is we're going to use Russian holy water, okay? And, and I'm only going to use just a little bit at a time because when you cook with fortified spirits, let me tell you, caution, the fumes, if exposed to a flame, will combust. So if you're on a glass stove, nothing's going to happen unless you take a clicker and light it. And if you are on a fire stove, then it can catch on fire if you expose the fume to the flame. But if you get nervous, don't add water. It ruins the sauce, okay? So don't add water. What you do is just simply have something to cover the whole thing out and it'll go out. But look, I'm only going to add a little, just a little. Just as much as Jesus made in the wedding feast of Cana, okay? That's all. Just a little bit. And just a little bit here. And nothing bad has happened until I light it on fire. And then people always ask, why are you doing that? And the answer is, because it's cool. That's why, all right? Secondly, this is awesome for Facebook pictures. And I'm at Father Leo B. So get your cameras ready now. 
Got it? Get it? Filipino had the cameras going the entire time. I love it. All right. The reason why I'm doing this also is because I'm waiting for the... I'm cooking the alka hell out of it also, all right? And then I do look up because I have set off fire alarms in a nursing home. I was in a 5,000 bed nursing home doing a little event for some of the people after they saw me on the Food Network when I beat Bobby Play. But basically when I was doing these events, because as you can see, I don't just cook. I try to, you know, teach a message here about the power of food. And when we look at the power of food, it does have power to make people happy. Even to the point where as I was doing this, it was a five alarm fire blaze that was going on and the fire chief comes out and he says to me, I should give you a $5,000 fine for every false alarm. $1,000 for every false I have no idea why I made him sound like Barney Fife for just a moment. But I guess he was Southern or something like that. So I said, well, thank you, Mr. Fire Chief, for not giving me a, a fine. But, but why? And he says, because that's some darn good pasta right there. That is really, really good. And it, it really is true that if you want to change people's hearts and minds, go through their stomach. And isn't that what Jesus did? Didn't Jesus eventually even become food for a reason? Because he wants us to be changed. He wants us to be more like him. Because he knows full well that mom and mother church are right. We are what we eat. Oh, bubble action going. Common sense. If things are going a little crazy, chill out. <laughs> Turn the heat down. Life lesson, especially for parents. Because as soon as their kids start bubbling up with all their hormones and stuff like that, what we got to do is relax. We have to know if we're good cooks, we're going to be good shepherds. Because if you're a good cook, you're going to know what your temperament of your children are and how much heat can they take. All of these issues are part of why food and faith go hand in hand. Now I'm going to add some kosher salt to this because I'm very ecumenical and interreligious. And because I am on YouTube as well, we have to salt bay it. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, good. So we've got this going. I'm just heating this up. I'm gonna hit it with a little cracked pepper. And basically, folks, this sauce is almost done. And if I was mean to you, and I made a very special batch for Father Kyle, we would have added these red chili pepper flakes at the beginning of the cooking process because that releases the capsicum oil and the spices of it all. You know, when I was a kid, I don't know if you can tell because I'm so shy and humble now, <laughs> but when I was a kid, I had a little smart mouth. I don't know if you can tell. And uh, my mom would get angry at me if I said something like to my sister, dumb, dumb, stupid, dumb, dumb. You know, like, like now we'd be happy if kids said only that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the problem is my mom didn't like hearing any disrespect. So she would literally take black pepper and rub it on my tongue as punishment. Little did she know, I like spicy food, all right? So one of the things we gotta remember is proper punishment is not to send your kids away from the table. They actually are enjoying not being at the table. If you really wanna punish your kids, make them stay. Talk to them. Make them make them do the dishes. You know, by the way, what I'm going to do now is add heavy whipping cream. Okay, good. Father Kyle is the only one that made a sound, and I'm happy about that. No one else judged me. Because <laughs> guess what, folks? As a Catholic, I can eat and drink everything. And so we're just adding a little bit, just a little bit. And I love that about being Catholic. You know, as a Catholic, 
We have no dietary restrictions. And this is really beautiful. Yeah, no, no dietary restrictions. Dietary disciplines. Disciplines. But we can eat. Can you imagine what it was like for those Jewish boys called disciples? And you got a little bit wind of the uh, gospel tonight. Sent out to all the world to preach the good news, right? And he gave them an evangelization tool. He said, give peace to the household. If peace is from there, it's going to rest on you. And then he gave them the most powerful, practical evangelization tool ever. Something that families need to understand. Now I'm going to add the pasta, which was perfectly cooked, al dente, which basically means it's not mashed potatoes. All right. So <laughs> when you cook pasta, I always go two minutes under because... The point of the pasta is not to have the sauce poured over it, but to have the, the pasta poured into the sauce itself. The Italians call this baptism. <laughs> because you're literally taking in all those flavors from the baptismal waters which is holiness. But these poor Jewish boys sent out to all the world. Jesus gave them a tool, say, peace to this household. And then he said, then he said, eat what is set before you. That is interesting. Because remember, Jewish people have a ton of dietary restrictions. They are not, they had never eaten a Maryland crab cake. They had never eaten a ham sandwich. They had never eaten bacon. <laughs> Can you imagine their first words when they ate bacon? I know what they first, they surely said. Amen, hallelujah, praise you, Lord <laughs> Jesus, praise you, Jesus. But the point is to make sure that when he was going out, these disciples were going out, that they could, this is bad English, but they could meet people where they're at and not judge them. We can be so judgmental with food these days, it's amazing. Everyone's like a Nazi with their diets. Y'all make me sick. Good Lord, I can't eat that. Yes, you can. Just always in moderation. God wants to feed us everything. Don't be a cafeteria cat like, I will not eat this. And if it's broccoli you don't like, I gave this woman a recipe. The same one in my book, available right out there. <laughs> She called me up. Her kids called me in the next day. And he says, Father Leo, your broccoli tastes like chicken nuggets. <laughs> you know, I, with my job as I travel, I, I, I meet so many different people of all walks of life. A little bit of parsley at the end. A little toss and then we're going to be eating real soon. And I just know that I can't give communion to everybody. It's not my right. I remember going to a nursing home again, and one of the more progressive sisters says, well, Miss McGillicuddy receives communion, and Miss Patrick Finn receives communion. I said, but Miss Patrick Finn's not Catholic. And she goes, well, we give every communion to everybody here. We don't want to exclude anybody. So I said, hold on a second, sister. I walked over to Miss Finn. I said, hey, Miss Finn, do you want to become Catholic? And she goes, hell no. <laughs> so the fact is, I can't give communion to everybody. Because they may not subscribe to everything the Catholic Church is feeding them in the one bite. But I can still give Jesus to everyone. Like Mother Teresa, she didn't give communion to everybody, but she gave Jesus to everybody. Because she gave them food. You know, and I think when we discover the power of food, then you enter into an epic food fight. A bite-sized history of salvation. The name of my third book. <laughs> which is really a book about the spirituality of the Eucharist. A lot of people have questions about the Eucharist and adoration. That's the answer. He wants to make himself bite sizable. And I remember after I beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> I did. I, I, that's it. I remember when I beat him. And after my book became a bestseller, I mean, it was just... And then I had to do the TV show every Friday at 5 p.m. And basically, after all that, I will be honest, and Father Kyle knows this. I'm, just, I'm a little shtickish and hamish right now. But Father Kyle knows this. I, I, you don't want to do... Because people think, oh, you're the cooking priest. He's the baking priest. No, I'm fatherleofeeds.com. All right, and so that's who I am. But I said, God, I'm done. I'm done. Because people think that this is kind of like a joke. 
And the fact is, it did start off as a joke. I wrote about it in that first chapter of the book. And then I prayed. I said, God, I'm done. He says, no, you're not. You have to feed families. We got ministries for women, ministries for men, ministry for kids. What do we have for the entire family? Isn't this amazing that children are laughing with the adults? These kids are actually paying attention. <laughs> we got to learn how to bring our families together. So this has been the first time you've done this in a while. Why? That's what the book is about, celebrating family life. And I thought, that's done. And I said, God, what more do you want me to do? And he says, if you really want to encourage families, then you got to write a book where families begin, and that's marriage. So I wrote the book, Spicing Up Married Life. And I know you're all thinking, but you're a priest, man. What do you know about marriage? Well, I know enough I didn't want to get married, okay? <laughs> to say, and the one thing I want you all to learn from the chapter is that God and I think that anniversaries are stupid. <laughs> and like all the women here are like, I don't like him anymore. <laughs> but all the guys are like, honey, just hear him out. Just <laughs> and I say stupid because it's true. From the Latin stupor, sleepy, slow, why do you people wait once a year to celebrate your love? With 12 chapters, you celebrate month anniversaries, monthly dinner dates. And now the women are like, I like that guy. <laughs> and all the guys are like, <laughs> <laughs> You see, we got to remember that food has power to bring us together. I know that just yesterday, we had the March for Life. And the Department of Health and Human Services now has a a conscious clause which was supposed to not have been violated about seven years ago when President Obama gave us that Department of Health and Human Services. And I gotta let you know that I actually was asked to speak to the federal government, the Department of Health and Human Services, on family life and fatherhood. 500 government employees gave me a standing ovation with a message that is very similar to the one I'm giving you right now. And they gave me a standing ovation because of the vodka, all right? <laughs> but also because I reminded them that the two great parents of our country is the government and the church. And while they are to remain separate, they are not to be divorced. They must have a way to communicate with each other. And what's the best place to communicate? This table. We're gonna be eating pretty soon. I don't want you guys just to talk. I want you to ask yourselves questions like this. What are you hungering for in life? And where do you go to be fed? Because the devil wants to feed you. If you don't believe me, I wrote about it in the book. <laughs> but more importantly, but more importantly, more importantly, I want you just to be able to celebrate your faith. This is a feast day, people. I don't know if you know this, but the Catholic Church has more feast days than fast days. And yet, we don't do it. Because why? It takes work. But if you're working for stuff that simply feeds the body but doesn't feed the soul, then you're working for the wrong things. Now, what I've got to do now is just simply offer one plate of grace.com. <laughs> and the reason why I want to do this is because I want to talk about presentation at the very end. Are you all sufficiently hungry now? <laughs> exactly. Now you will eat. But before we do that, we have to make sure that everything is ready. A little bit of parsley at the very end, and the Italians always, always add just a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. If they saw me using a jar the size of this, like McDonald's, they would probably have a heart attack, but no big deal. But they would always add just a little drizzle of olive oil, just for a little sheen and some texture and an oral flavor. They actually call that confirmation. <laughs> Food and faith go hand in hand. And it requires you to just saw me cleaning up. You see me with my apron, which, which is why I sell them. 
and they are black, and therefore slimming, okay? Because the only thing I gotta do now is serve this plate of grace. And the person I wanna serve this to is the person who has been plating grace for you this entire time, your pastor, Father Schnippel, who I'm so glad to call a brother in the kitchen because there are a lot of hungry people in this world. Someone's gotta serve them. And so now that I'm gonna serve this to him, I'm gonna ask him to pray grace and then I want him to eat all of this up before we actually enter our competition. Because I also added to this diarrhea medicine. <laughs> Thanks, Father! <laughs> so... Way more to come! Way more to come! We're gonna pray, we're gonna eat, and then as you finish up, we're gonna enter into an epic food fight. So let's do this. And the only thing I can say is I'm in trouble. <laughs> in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you pour out so many gifts and blessings on us in our journey of life. So many blessings that we miss, so many blessings, gifts that we do not recognize. We ask you to help us recognize the gifts that you have given to us this day. Gifts of our families, gifts of our friends, the gifts of our fellowship, the gift of this parish, the gift of the saints, so many who have gone before us as great examples of what it means to be a faithful disciple of the Lord. We ask you to bless the food set before us, may it be a sign of the nourishment you pour out upon us always. And we remember those, lift up those who go without this night, that they might be fed by the grace and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask all this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 St. John Newman, pray, pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we've got a system here. We've got our servers that are going to be plating the grace for you. They're going to be putting it near the, the, the plated products will be near where the appetizers are. And so just simply go in a, in a nice order. There's plenty of food for everyone. And then if somebody would like to sample one of these here, you can use your spoon or fork. Just don't double dip, people, okay? Just don't double dip. And, and since my family's 